Hey, in this video I'm going to talk about sizing options. That includes properties of a width, height and a boundaries like min width, max width, min height and max height. So let's begin. For this example I'll take this logo. As you can notice this logo is way too big and I don't like this. How can I control the size of this logo? Well, it's pretty simple. First of all, I just need to select this logo and after that I need to scroll down a bit in this panel and I can notice sizing options. Now, for this example, let's set width to this tag. I will go and set 200 pixels. You can clearly notice that my logo is now way smaller and I like this. You can also notice these labels here. These labels indicate the width and the height of the tag. In this case, you can see that the width is 200 pixels. That means that we successfully change its width. When I go and select this field, I can hold shift on my keyboard and scroll on my mouse. You can clearly see how these values are slowly increasing. This can be a good example for you to see how the width property have an impact on a tag. I can also hold shift on the keyboard and scroll down on my mouse and the values will slowly decrease. To summarize things here really quickly, width field is used to set how wide one tag will be, but it's not always wise to set fixed widths to the tags and in the next example I'll show you why. In this example I'll show you why is in some cases bad to use fixed width. I'll use this section for example and you can notice this heading here. It's way too wide, it's going from edge to edge and I don't like this. How can I fix this? First thing that comes to mind is to set width and that's right. I'm now going to select this div that's wrapping my heading and my paragraph and let's set some width to it. Let's go with 1000 pixels. And just to look better, let's center this div. When you have fixed width set to your tag, you can easily center it. You can just go to the spacing panel and click on this small icon here. This will automatically set your left and right margin to auto and center your tag as you can see. But to say it again, this method only works when you've set width to your tag. But enough with that. Let's go back and talk why is this method of setting width to the tag a bad one. When you take a look at this structure, everything seems normal and you're probably thinking, why is this method bad? To answer this question, I'll need to go to some smaller viewports. Let's go to Landscape Mobile and you can see right away that all of my content is going outside of the boundaries on this viewport. To fix this, I'd need to go and input some new values in width field. You can notice when I input my first value, my content is again going outside of the boundaries, so I need to go and set it even lower and this may take a while. This looks nice, but when I go to the even smaller devices, you can notice that again my content is going outside of the boundaries, so now I need to set again some new fixed widths and this can go in circles because you may need some custom breakpoints and this will take a lot of time. But there is one easier method. Let's go back to this landscape and reset this value really quickly and let's go back to the desktop. Now, how can we fix this problem? Firstly, I'll reset this value here and now in help comes the max width field. Let's input our value here. Let's go again with a thousand pixels and with this we've set the top boundary to this tag. Basically, we set to this tag you can go to the thousand pixels, but you cannot go above that. Because our tag was way wider than thousand pixels, now this property has made this tag go smaller in width. Let me show you what will happen if I set some smaller values here. I'll change them slowly so you can see. You can notice that my div is going even smaller. And when I put some bigger values here, you will notice that my div is again growing in width. Let's put this value back to 1000. Also, one pretty important thing to mention when you are using a max width, 
you should also into width field input a value of 100%. You're probably thinking, why should I do this? Uh, that's because with this uh, property you said to your tag, you will go in width as much as you can until you hit some boundaries. In our case, boundaries are max width set to 1000 pixels. So our tag will go until it hits 1000 pixels and it will stop growing. You're probably again thinking, why shall I do all of this work when I can just input a thousand pixels into a weight field and achieve the same result? To answer you this question, let's go back again to some smaller devices. You can now notice that this text isn't going outside of the boundaries and when I go to some smaller devices, you can also see that this text is in place. Or said in other words, this method has done the responsiveness for us. Let me explain you the difference between these two methods. When you are setting a fixed width to some tags, you are forcing them to go to that value. Or in our first example, we were forcing this div to go to the thousand pixels, no matter if the viewport is smaller. But with this second method, we set the top boundary to be thousand pixels. And with a value of 100% in width, we basically said to our tag, you can go to the thousand pixels whenever you can, but when you cannot do that, you can go lower. In this case here, our viewport is way smaller than 1000 pixels and it's not allowing our tag to go beyond that. And that's the reason why this method is so amazing, because it does the responsive part for you. But you cannot always use this. In some cases, you would need to use a fixed width. And later on in this video, I'll show you some examples for that. We talked about width and max width property, but there is one more property connected to width that we should talk about, and that is min width. I made this simple structure to demonstrate you how min width works. I just have one div and one image inside of it. To show you how min width works, let's first go to the browser and let me resize the window to show you what will happen with our div. You can see while I'm resizing this window that my div follows until it hits some boundaries and this logo isn't allowing this div to go even smaller. When I go back and set my window to be full width, my div will again follow. Let's go back to the builder and talk more about min width. What if we don't want our tag to go below some values? Well, in this case, we can set min width. Min width is quite the opposite to max width. As we said earlier, max width is top boundary to tag. It doesn't allow tag to go above some values. But min width is bottom boundary to the tag and it doesn't allow tag to go below the values we set him. But enough talking. Let's go and show all of this in practice. Let's set min width to this div. Let's go with 500 pixels. And as you can notice, nothing happened. That's because our div is by the default wider than the 500 pixels. To demonstrate you how min width works, I'll again go to the browser and resize the window. You will notice that while I'm resizing this window, nothing happens until this div goes to the 500 pixels in width. No matter how much I resize this window more, this div cannot go below 500 pixels. And that's what the min width property does. To say it again, we practically said to this div, you can go to the 500 pixels in width, but you cannot go under that value. We said enough for the width. Let's now go to the second half of the size panel, and that is height options. Same as the width option, we have the height field and these two condition fields, min height and max height. Very important thing to say before we dive into the height options is in the most cases you shall let your tags dedicate their own height. But in the other cases you would need to set some conditions to your height and even some fixed height. Let me show you how the height works. For example, let's take this image. I'll set height to it. Let's go with 1000 pixels. You can notice that this image is now higher. 
This cannot make uh, difficulties in responsiveness like the width did. Because we set the height to this tag, but this tag will still shrink in width and won't go out of the boundaries in viewport. So this cannot harm our structure as width can. Let's reset this value really quickly and let's say a few words about max height. Max height is exactly the same as the max width. Max height sets the top boundaries to the tag which he cannot go above. Let's set 400 pixels here and you can see that this image is now 400 pixels in height. This image cannot go above this value but this image can go under this value. That's what the max height property does. Let's reset this value as well and let's say a few words about min height. Min height does exactly everything the same as the min width. We set the bottom boundary to some tag and this tag cannot go below this value. Earlier in this video we said that you shall avoid setting fixed widths and heights to the tags, but there are some situations when you would need to set fixed widths and heights to the tag. Let me show you in this example. Down below I have made a simple structure. I have one div. What if I want to turn this div into a perfect square? Well, that's quite simple. First of all, I need to select it and input some width. Let's go with 100 pixels. And because we want to make perfect square, the width and the height needs to be the same. And voila, we got ourselves a perfect square. Now, this here cannot harm our structure because these values are way, way too small. And 100 pixels cannot go out of the boundaries into smaller viewports and cannot overall destroy our structure. The problem appears when we use some bigger values in these fields. For example, 700 pixels, 800 pixels, 1000, 2000 pixels and some even bigger numbers. These small numbers cannot harm our structure. But let's go back to this example again. What if we want to make, let's say, perfect circle out of this div? We can easily achieve that. But we need to have again same width and same height. Let's change these properties to 1500 pixels. And again, we've got ourselves a square. Let's transform this div into a circle. Let's input a radius value of 50% and you will notice that we got ourselves a perfect circle. I hope that you now understand when shall you use fixed widths and heights and when shall you avoid these properties. Hopefully you found this video helpful. I'll be seeing you in the next one.